the Function with Purpose podcast. All things health, wellness, fitness, and education through the physical therapy perspective. I am Dr. Amy Bullock, owner and founder of Fortress Physical Therapy. Fortress PT is here to serve the Charlotte metro area by highlighting the importance of how and why physical therapy should be a part of your health and wellness lifestyle. Here we go. Welcome to Season 5, Episode 7 of the Function with Purpose podcast. Dr. Amy here with you guys today. Hope everybody is doing awesome, whether you just woke up, you're driving in your car, on your way to work, or maybe you're on your lunch break. I appreciate the listen. Um, All right, just going to go right into this. Um, You ever walk into the gym um, and you kind of see a lot of individuals or maybe people rehabbing, um, you know, from the physical therapy point of view, uh, just like some isolation movements, i.e. bicep curls, maybe tricep pushdowns, maybe some rotator cuff in and outs, or maybe you're in the baseball position when you're in rehab, uh, trying to make your shoulder stronger. You're in this, what we call this 90, 90 position and you're connected to a band and you're just, you know, going down and up, down and up as if you're throwing a baseball and trying to strengthen your rotator cuff. Um, yeah, th- those are good and all like isolation movements are good and all, but realistically it's not functional. It does not mimic everyday life. So this specific episode Movement pattern training splits or movement pattern rehabbing. A better way for longevity and durability to create carryover in daily life. So I want you to think of this. I've been on the, um, I'm not sponsored, totally should be, but I've been on the functional bodybuilding train for almost four years now. And I have now understood that the training regimen that I've been on is encompassing one, two, three, four, five, seven, about six core different movement patterns, six to seven. So when we think about this, um, when we're rehabbing a rotator cuff or exercising slash training, um, you know, striving for a fitness goal, you should be incorporating or training movement patterns, i.e. pushing patterns, pulling patterns, hinging patterns, squatting, lunging or single leg work, and um, overall core strengthening stability. If you're not instilling these patterns into your routine um, via training or small rehabilitation movements, then you're missing out on the full potential that your body can endure. I literally thought I I was one of those people who would go into the gym. I would do zero rehab. Number one, when I was going, um, when I was going through physical therapy school, like, you know, we were learning rehab, but I wasn't like doing it on myself at all whatsoever. Yep. Guilty, totally guilty. Handcuff me. Yep. But until I really dug deeper into my aspect of training, um, i.e. exercise as well, that we're not, we don't train muscle groups. We don't exercise muscle groups, i.e. the biceps, the triceps, the quads, the hamstrings, the calf muscles. We have it all wrong. We, we, we need to train or exercise movement patterns movement patterns, pushing patterns. So, you know, if you have to get up off the floor after you um, perhaps might be watching TV from your elbows while you're on your belly and you have to push yourself up off off the floor to get in a half kneeling or tall kneeling position, well, guess what? 
you got the push and then you have a squat lunge pattern where you have to stand up. Well, don't you want to be strong AF, excuse me, in that position or those movement patterns to feel strong, to feel confident? So why not train those patterns? So it can be, it, it, it doesn't have to be very complicated when we instill these type of movement patterns into rehabilitation or training routines. It just has to be balanced, right? So going back to the rotator cuff example, you know, you're standing there at that 90-90 position um, in this baseball throwing position and you have the band around your hand and you're gripping it and you're kind of just cranking your arm forward and backwards like that's that's great and all but if I kind of want to tap into the full potential of the rotator cuff I better be doing some pushing pulling carrying lunging um yeah lunging um as well in order to really tap into the the whole musculature of the arm potential i think one of the most ultimate movement patterns to train and to rehab is the turkish get up um if y'all don't know what the turkish turkish get up is just google it dr google will tell you the answer and i also have some coffee talks regarding um the turkish get up as well but you know, after constantly refining and um, now uh, literally doing daily rehab uh, for my rot rotator cuff of my shoulder, my hips, um, and now more directly into my ankle complex, um, i.e. my Achilles, I'm still rehabbing it, yes, uh, totally still on that bus and will be. Um, I'm, I am incorporating some isolation work. Um, so some stuff that does actually um, target the rotator cuff or my ankle, um, as well as getting into these seven, six to seven most common movement patterns that we should be um, instilling in our daily routine and then adding load to it. So the pushing, the pulling, the hinging, squatting, lunging, and uh, core training. Um, and in getting into different planes or multi-planar training and rehab, right? We don't just function in a forward to backward plane, but we also have to function in a side to side plane, a diagonal plane, a rotation, or what we call a transverse plane. Um, so, you know, if you're in the gym and you're just kind of training, um, you know, a squat, bench and press like that that's good but i think i think you're missing out on the full potential um so we, we're not necessarily training backs and bicep today we're not training chest and try today right because in general what are those movements anyways they they complement each other chest involvement is going to incorporate pushing involvement, which then we know the triceps involve pushing, right? So why not train the movement patterns? Because that's going to carry over to our daily routine. Um, so just some food for thought uh, for y'all out there who are listening. Um, you know, I, I think it's, start, it's time to start switching up uh, the, the mind game and being more purposeful. Um, to really hone in and get full body rehab um, and movement pattern training. Because, you know, you think of this, when, when we're infants, uh, you know, babies, infants, and then we get into adolescence, um, we, we have to learn fundamental movement patterns. And that means laying on our belly, pushing to roll onto our back or rolling from our back to our belly, and then getting into kneeling and uh, crawling, stooping, right? As we become an adult, and then an older adult slash geriatric, guess what? We start losing that functional movement capacity pattern. So think about that. So, if you guys have any questions, or if you don't really know how to kind of piece things together, um, 
I, I, I do. I, I help work with athletes and patients from afar, remotely. Um, I do some specific training, wellness, rehab routines remotely. Um, uh, and, and the program is tailored to you. Um, but if you're looking for someone in your area, th those are questions to ask, you know. Um, how's my training might look like? Um, how do I incorporate some rehab specific movements, right? Because Dr. Google isn't for you, really, right? Dr. Google is for planet Earth. Dr. Google is there to help spark interest to be, hmm, maybe I should have a professional look at my rotator cuff. Maybe there's something that I'm missing out on. I, I probably maybe just need a little bit of accountability. Um, yeah, so, you know, we don't train muscle groups. We train movement patterns. So as far as a training split or a rehab split, that's most likely a little bit better way for longevity and durability for your muscles, tendons, joints, and overall quality of movement to maintain as we become older. So if you guys have any questions, definitely drop it in the comments. I appreciate the listen. And remember, um, function with purpose. That's a wrap for today's episode, Function with Purpose podcast. For more information on this episode, please check out the show notes within your podcast app. Be sure to subscribe, like, share, or drop your comments and questions below. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Thanks for the listen. Pursuit, precision, purpose.